We're back with the latest from the Middle East. Several leaders from across the Arab and Islamic worlds are set to hold an emergency summit in Saudi Arabia today at issue how to end the violence in Gaza and in Lebanon. Yeah, one key nation who will be present is Qatar. This meeting comes just days after that country suspended its role as mediator between Israel and Hamas, accusing both sides of not negotiating in good faith. This comes as Israel continues to ramp up its attacks in the region with Israeli strikes killing dozens in Gaza and northern Lebanon over the weekend. NBC News Chief International Correspondent Keir Simmons is live in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Keir, good morning. So just what kind of expectations are there for this summit and which countries are going to be there? Well, it's a, it's a display of unity, really, by 80 countries uh, from the Arab and Islamic world. And, and it really is just trying to send a message of support for Gaza and for Lebanon. We just heard from the Secretary General of the Arab League, uh, who says uh, in, a st in a statement, today's summit carries a clear message that the world cannot bear the consequences of turning its back on this ongoing massacre. And then goes on to say, Israel may need, among its remaining friends, someone to save it from itself. And its actions. So uh, the message is, is clear. I think it's also a message of, of how much the world, or at least this region, has shifted in the last year with the events uh, of the last year, Joe. And here, the U.S., as I just mentioned, asked Qatar to kick Hamas representatives out of Doha. That was about two weeks ago, which has effectively stalled any negotiations. Why mm. did U.S. officials request that? And is there a sense that neither side is looking to make any progress towards a deal? Well, diplomats with knowledge of events that I spoke to through the weekend say that uh, Qatar made the decision uh, to end uh, its mediating role or at least pause it uh, for now uh, and then informed Israel, Hamas and the United States. So we have a, a U.S. official saying that they asked Qatar to do it. Uh, then we have a, a, a diplomat with knowledge uh, suggesting uh, that effectively it was a bit more of an independent decision by Qatar. But what it is, what that diplomat does say is that this is about uh, the failure, uh, they, he says, of uh, Israel and of Hamas to negotiate in good faith. Uh, and uh, there is a suggestion uh, from an, an official statement from the Qataris that, that they will uh, reinstigate the negotiations. Kind of if there is any, if there's any point, if there's a chance of, of making some, some progress. Here we also have to talk about what's happening here. President-elect Trump getting ready to return to the White House. Republicans yeah. will have control over foreign affairs. How are leaders in the Middle East and Israel responding to that? What kind of signal, signals are they sending? Well, I think the conversations here and, and around the region uh, have no question in them, frankly, that uh, the election of, of President-elect Trump is going to change things uh, dramatically. Uh, and there are interesting questions, many things we, we honestly don't know uh, about that. As an example, we have uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel saying that uh, he has spoken to President-elect Trump three times. But uh, the President-elect has also spoken to the Crown Prince of, of Saudi Arabia here, Mohammed bin Salman. So which of those two leaders, both of whom describe themselves as friends of the president-elect, which of those uh, will President-elect Trump uh, actually uh listen uh, to. And, and again, you know, the, the world has changed so much. Just think about this. During President-elect Trump's first administration, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates were in a war in, in Yemen with the Houthis. Uh, and through that war, were effectively in, in kind of uh, adversaries of Iran. Well, now the vice president of Iran is here at this summit. Uh, the, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia spoke to the president of Iran, Pajash Kian, just yesterday. So the alliances have shifted, uh, the partnerships have shifted. Saudi Arabia trying to play a more diplomatic role in relation to Iran. On the other hand, of course, uh, President-elect Trump has made uh, his feelings about Iran uh, clear. And, of course, there are those reports that there was an assassination attempt against him by the Iranians. And we know what Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel thinks about Iran. So, so, so there are strong forces in different directions. And the question is, which way will President-elect Trump go? All right. Keir Simmons, Keir, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.